Oke, selamat pagi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih banyak semuanya yang sudah join pagi ini. Kembali berjumpa lagi sama saya di acara Future for Space 2020 dengan tema Facing the New Normal. Acara ini diselenggarakan oleh IKRA, sebuah platform yang membantu individu maupun korporasi untuk menjawab tantangan bisnis melalui data dan teknologi. Nah, kemarin kita udah banyak banget ngobrol membahas Uh, tantangan facing the new normal sama kemarin tuh ada Kang Emil ngomongin digital backbone di Jawa di Jawa Barat ada Bang Sandi Uno ngomongin data driven from the roots jadi ngomongin gimana SME bisa memanfaatkan data datanya ada juga Bang Rahmat Kaimudin uh, dengan sesinya berjudul wake up call for SME dan masih banyak lagi yang jelas hari ini juga masih akan kita penuhi juga uh, dengan dengan speaker speaker Uh, dari pakarnya masing-masing ada Prof Herawati uh, dari Aikman Institute, ada Prof Yohanes Surya, ada juga Arnold Ek dari Sprout Social dan masih banyak lagi tentunya. Jadi saya tun terus di sini. Hari ini saya akan buka sesinya uh, dengan Pak James Palin, uh, Managing Director dari Monroe Consulting. Tapi sebelumnya mungkin saya mau ngajak teman-teman untuk bisa berikut donasi uh, di bagi rata uh, bagi rata itu adalah sebuah peer to peer wealth distribution tool uh, jadi caranya tinggal style aja QR code nya eh, di scan aja QR code nya yang ada di kanan bawah layar terus atau bisa juga buka bagi rata id sebelumnya terima kasih banyak untuk sponsor utama Claudera Monroe dan sponsor lainnya terima kasih juga buat Data Science Indonesia sebagai community partner terima kasih juga untuk tentunya Tempo .co Info Komputer dan Invia yang udah bantu mewujudkan acara ini. Oke, buat teman-teman yang mungkin mau menyebarkan diskusinya juga di luar dari uh, YouTube ini, uh, kalian bisa juga posting di sosial media dengan hashtag Future for Space 2020, hashtag Siap Hadapi Perubahan, dan hashtag Sebar Semangat di Rumah. Oke, kalau gitu kita langsung aja uh, say hello to our speaker. Today, Mr. James Pollin. How are you, James? Good morning, Andy. Yeah, very well. Good morning. Very well. How are you? Good. How are, how are the uh, isolation lifestyle working out for you so far? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it, it has its ups and its downs, but certainly it's the new normal. So um, this, a lot of my days are spent exactly like this on Zoom, Zoom yeah. meetings. Um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, looking forward to getting back to some kind of normality, to be honest. Exactly. It's just, uh, even for me today, this morning, when I'm, when I'm wearing my shirt instead of my t-shirt, that feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this may be the most dressed up I've been for a while. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, James, uh, you are a managing director in cons uh, Monroe Consulting Group that uh, involves around um, hiring industry, right? But you've been around quite as well. You've been leading companies uh, in uh, Japan, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, mostly mm -hmm. also involved around uh, hiring uh, talents, industry talents. So seeing from your experience, uh, particularly in developed countries, what can you learn? What can we learn from both employee and employer side to, uh, for, for the industry here in Indonesia? Well, I mean, my, my whole career has been in tech. So, you know, how things are done in, in, in each country is is slightly different. But, there, you know, it's it's certainly a, a big question. But uh, to kind of make that more manageable, I think, in terms of um, employers, you know, there's definitely a, a talent war on. Certainly when it comes to more niche roles, data roles, technology, there's, um, you know, on a long enough timeline, every company is going to be a technology company. So everyone's trying to get in the best talent. Everyone's trying to get them into their into their business. So you've got to have an effective hiring plan put in place. You know, look at who you're trying to target um, mm. and making sure that you're using different information streams. Make sure that information is flowing towards yourself. So whether that's social media campaigns, LinkedIn campaigns, headhunting via LinkedIn, um, referral schemes, um, using your network um, and using agencies as well. Depending on the round of funding you're on, if you're a small startup, you're probably not going to have the money to use agencies and 
mm. explore that side of things and have expensive LinkedIn licenses. But you know, you, you you've got to you, you've got to base it on what you've got. And you know, obviously, once companies go into Series A, Series B funding, they tend to then start to use agencies. But um, having that structured is is really important. Uh, I think one of the biggest mistakes I see certainly walking into smaller startup businesses is they don't have a good interview um, structure in place. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's too short. Maybe it's one round of interviews where it's like a, a round robin or everyone's in the same meeting and then it's an offer. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not taking into consideration the, um, you know, we're, we're humans, right? You know, people who are interviewing, uh, you know, they're not robots. They need to they need to feel like they're earning something. And sometimes mm -hmm. if an interview is too easy, people aren't going to accept that offer. Um, and vice versa, if you take too long, you're going to lose the talent to your competition. So okay. you need to structure a good system, which is going to make sure that you test them, um, you get to know them, they get to know you, um, and, and be open and, and, and transparent as well with regards to the business and, and, and what you're looking to, to grow. Mm. And, and that kind of brings me on to the third point, I guess, as well, which is, especially for smaller businesses, you, you need to build a culture. You know, you need mm. to have some idea of who you are and what you're about, because that's what a lot of people buy into. Certainly the millennial generation today, you know, they're, um, they're not just looking for, for money and career development. Yes, they are important, but certainly being able to be a part of something, mm. you know, being able to um, join a team that has a culture which, um, you know, is, is really dependent upon the staff that you hire. So. You know, no one person is bigger than that team, making sure that the people you hire fit your culture because mm. a bad hire, a bad manager um, can really, you know, break that culture and can really put new cultures into the business, which, which you don't want. Um, mm. I think, that, you know, those are the main things that employers need to look at, you know, obviously yeah, competitor analysis, making sure that they're competitive in terms of salary and looking after the staff. I think certainly modern tech firms want more flexibility, flexible working hours, beanbags, you know, all, all of those types of things are very common these days. But yeah, yeah. Um, developed, developed countries, you've got a lot more competition um, for, for, for often less talent. So, you know, you mm. really have to be refined in terms of what you're doing from the moment that person engages with your business to the moment they get an offer, they've got to feel um, you know, like it's a professional business, like you're, you're, you're doing things properly and, and engaging well. Um, and from the employee side, you know, it's, it's very similar. I think, you know, when I started out in recruitment in Japan, um, 2005, there was, there was no LinkedIn. You know, everything was done very, very yeah. differently. But, but certainly more uh, modern uh, times have brought around um, the easy apply button on LinkedIn, which makes it so easy yeah. to apply for a job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's really changed the way that people apply. You know, back in back in my day, you you would you would write a CV. Yeah, you, might fax you need one, to put it in envelopes and then send it. Put it, it in an envelope, <laughs> yeah, and it goes out. And um, yeah. you know, that's how we used to receive offer letters. Yeah. And you know, technology is great, but you've really got to make it work for you, both for the employee yeah. and employer. Otherwise, you know, you're working for technology, and, and you become a slave to it, and uh, that's yeah. not effective. So, you know, you've got to look at, you know. What are your top jobs? You know, what do you want to, who do you want to work for? And you aim at those. You know, if you apply to 100 companies and we contact you and we say, hey, great, look, we saw your application, your profile looks good. And your first question is, who are you? We're already not <laughs> interested in you, you know, because yeah. Yeah, you're not interested in our business. So you, you've yeah. got to be targeted. You've got to focus yeah. on who you want to join the most. Um, and you've yeah. got to make your, you know, your, you put your best effort into joining that business because, um, you know, there, there's a lot of choice out there and, you know, there, there are lots of candidates out there and, you know, the people who are interviewing these candidates interview a lot of people and you know straight away if someone's being dishonest or if is not that interested in your business or is yeah. applying to yeah. lots of companies. And, you know, I've asked candidates before, you know, why did you apply to my business? And their answer was because there was an easy apply button. You know, <laughs> you're... You're not you're not going to be joining our business. You know, it's that yeah. simple. So to be targeted certainly is is um, it is the first thing. And I think the second thing is that um, you know you've got to you've got to make sure that you interview the company as well. A lot of people go to those interviews ex just expecting to be interviewed, and they forget to ask questions to show interest. Exactly, it's a two-way street, right? 
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's a chance for you to figure out that this is your career. Um, and if you're taking it seriously, then you'll ask questions. And if you do ask good questions, you know, the, the, the interviewer is going to see, oh, this, this person's interested. They know what they're talking about. They've done their research. And that already puts you above 75% of the people who apply to companies anyway. Um, and it's noticeable. So putting in that effort, putting in the preparation, um, doing some research really makes a big difference. And that, that's important. And practicing before as well. Um, yeah. You know, being nervous in an interview is normal. We all, we all get nervous in interviews. But, um, you know, some preparation, again, will show. And it will, it, will, it will put you in the mind of the interviewer. And if they're interviewing 5, 10, 15 people for that role, it helps you get through to the next round. Um, and building rapport. I think that's, that's probably one of the most important things is that um, certainly when people are anxious or nervous or, um, you know, trying to perform in, in an interview, they forget to, to, to build rapport. And, um, you know, it's one of the biggest things. People, people you know, will, people like people that they are like or that they want to be like. It's, it's really that simple. Uh -huh. So if you can, you know, do some research beforehand, you know a little bit about who's interviewing you, Maybe you use LinkedIn to look at connections you have in common, companies they used to work at. Maybe you went to the same university. Maybe you've got similar interests. You know, these are all good ways to, to build rapport. And if you can build rapport with someone in an interview, you know, that's, that's um, a big part of it. Obviously, technical stuff and all, all of this is, is part of it as well. But, you know, the people skills side of things and is something that really makes you stand out from the crowd as well. So you know, those are the main things I would say from, you know, between employers and employees and mm. and certainly something that you know i've noticed in singapore is is that things are certainly moving in the right direction and as things become um, more mature in terms of the market and in terms of the recruitment market the level of interviewing is going up um, mm. and you know the level of professionalism is going up and it's great it, it's really good to see and you know that's certainly why i'm here in indonesia cool that that uh, that was a lot of great tip for our tech talents. I hope uh, hearing this, they can take notes on how to pursue. Uh, Trying to put 15 years next... into 15 minutes is, is difficult. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> exactly. hopefully useful points. Yeah, but I want to touch up on uh, one point that you mentioned from the employer side, that we need to build culture, right? We need to build uh, an image, a brand of how the workplace in our company, in the employer's company looks like, right? What, how do you think uh, the best way for the employers to, to, uh, to make that image, to make that brand to the, um, to the top, talent, top tech talents out there? I mean, uh, for, yeah, it, for, big, for big employees, for big corporations, probably it's, it's easier for them because they already have the name and the brand, but mm. what, what can you say about for the starting? Yeah. I mean, it's a tough one. It, it, it's the same. All companies go through it. And, I, you know, I've done lots of startups and, um, and you know, even with Monroe, you know, we're still an SME sized business, 200 <laughs> employees. And, you know, you, you have to you, you have to find out what works for you. You know, there's no um, it's best not to try and imitate other businesses. It's best to try and be unique. And um, as you start to hire people, um, you know, certainly the, the CEO or the you know, the, the main person in the business is going to drive what that, um, you know, what that brand looks like. And, you know, it's something that as you hire more people, it will start to take shape. And um, you've got to nurture that. And I think um, being very transparent, being open and honest, um, you know, making work a fun thing is something that, you know, even in the last, you know, 15, 16 years I've been doing recruitment, it's gone from very typical nine to five office environments, very strict, certainly in Japan, even down to what you wear, um, you know, every day to, you know, much more relaxed environment, especially in the tech world, t-shirts and scooters in the office and beanbags. And, you know, that's very par for the course now to walk into tech offices, which are, you know, run by young millennials and, you know, very industrial offices and scooters and, um, but, you know, that's not for everybody. So, you know, you need to, you know, you need to play to your strengths. You need to play to um, what the people that you're speaking to, the people that you're interviewing uh, want as well. You need to listen. And then it, it, it comes over time. I think, it, you know, the, when people try and force it or try and imitate other companies, 
it doesn't yeah. always work so well. So you've got yeah. to be yeah. you've got to be authentic. Yeah. Well, especially now, uh, probably the bin bags, the big open spaces with a lot of people crammed in together is not very lucrative now. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, it, time as well. it's a good point. It, it's going <laughs> to change the way we work, and certainly, it's really opened my eyes to work from home. I mean, there was a lot of yeah. you know people that I thought you know if you work from home, you're going to be watching Netflix all day, yeah. and relaxing, and you know what, you can yeah. be as productive, if not more productive, working. So it really exactly. might change office environments forever. It, it really does. Yeah. Uh, still on the uh, uh, building the the, cult, the cultural branding, is it more important? You see, do you think it is more important to build the uh, build the perception of the brand externally or internally within your organization in terms of uh, making the hiring? Yeah. I think it. I think all of it starts internally. I think you know you can. Mm. You you've got to you've got to have a, something that's core to the business, that's core to you as a founder and or founders, um, and the first people that are coming in, and then you can, you know, you, you can show that brand to the world. You can market that. You can build that. And you know there, there are lots of companies that have have done that well over the years. You know, big companies, and um, but you've got to have something first you know apple was the first one to really change marketing to make it about how it makes you feel rather than what it does and, and lots of companies have tried to imitate that but again you've got to you've got to look at your market and you know if you're a a, a small tech company and you're trying to imitate a you know a very large one, you're, you're going to fail so you've got to look at you know what's intrinsic to the business and i think that's important and i think who you hire and go back to the point i made before and you know building that culture within the business will really um you know will really change um you know what you're putting out as a message to the market and, and looking at who you're trying to target as well because if you miss your target audience you know too too senior too junior um you know not professional enough too professional you know you're gonna you're not gonna be able to attract the right talent to the business and um, you, you know if you're looking at millennial generation or you know gen Z or you know whatever it is you know my generation yeah. your, <laughs> how you do that is different and you know it's also yeah. got to tally in with the customer as well so um, yeah it, it's always going to start internally I think if you try and push an image externally and then fulfill it internally, Um, living up to that expectation is, is often a tricky one. Cool. You mentioned a lot of a lot of great tips for the employees. Uh, to uh, you mentioned before that it needs to be targeted. It needs to be probably a bit uh, personal. Get to know the, about the interviewer. Get to know the employer, right? And then put that interest in on the interview, so you can show that your interest to the employer is as big as they are to you, right? Uh, but Um, hard skill is one thing, right? Hard skill is the thing that we probably need the most in the in 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 a, in a job in a role, especially tech roles. But what other skills do you think that mm, the tech talent needs to acquire to in order to go to the next level, in order to stand out from the other candidates? Yeah, well, it depends what you're doing. I mean, you know, if you're talking about pure developer roles and that side of the market, then You know, the, the reality is that people, people skills aren't that important because you're not you're not mm. engaging with the customers so much. Um, but you know, more advanced uh, technology is it? You know, being able to be at the forefront of uh, technology uh, is really important. And you know, as you start to then develop in your career, you've got to look at where you want to go. And um, you know, experience is the best teacher. So you, you start to learn what you're good at. You know what you're not good at, and you know right. if you haven't got people skills so much, and it's not something you want to develop, then you know you're probably not going to move into um, those leadership roles. Um, mm. you know, if you're a data engineer, data analyst, then you know you're not, you don't have that business acumen, and you, you you know you're not good with people. You're probably not going to become a data scientist. But mm. um, you know you've got you've got to play to your strengths, and um, you, you find that out for experience. You never know until you try, and I think certainly a lot of the Um, millennial generation that I see, uh, you know, there's a certain uh, fear of failure, and I think it's it's so 
important to fail, to go out and to try new things and to try and develop your skill set. You never know until you try it what you're going to be good at, what you're going to like, what you're not going to like. So um, being able to get out there and, and find companies that will, um, you know, nurture your, your talent, you know, help you to move up, help you to be creative, you know, not try and fit you in a box. Um, that That's really important. Um, yeah, and people skills. I think it's, you know, you are, um, it, it is very important, you know, Jack Ma made a, a really interesting point about this when he was asked if he wanted his kids to finish at top of the class. And he said, no, I want them to finish middle because if they finish top, they're going to have no people skills. I want them to finish <laughs> around the middle because that means that then they've had time to go out and experience yeah. life and meet people. And it's a really great answer because people skills are so important. You're, you're dealing with people, you're dealing with business. And you're good with people and you're good at, um, you know, it, it's such a big advantage. And you know, you do learn those skills early on. Um, so yeah, certainly, certainly people skills and you know, not being scared to fail are, are two of the most important things for employees, certainly young employees coming into business. So yeah, people, people skills, uh, it's probably able to bring, bring, um, uh, to know them better, right. To know what's best for you, best for the candidates, uh, to know what he's good at or what she's good at. So in Monroe, You've dealt a lot of uh, talents, uh, obviously, but how do you help them to know uh, what are the, uh, their, uh, how, how, how do you guys help them to be able to show them, uh, this is my best and this is what I'm good at. Did you do something like that as well? You mean our candidates who are interviewing with our clients? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, we interview them, you know, we sit down with them, we spend time with them um, and we prepare them for, you know, the, the, the challenge that's in front of them. And, you know, you've got to, you know, to look at um, there are lots of different variables. So, yes, technical skills, if they're a technical person is one, being able to test them on those side of things, um, make them understand about the business and, and, you know, really make them understand about what's um, going to be coming up in, in the interview. So, you know, preparing their basics are really important even before you go for an interview making sure that the cv is tailored the resume is tailored for that role you know yeah, because yeah. You know, like i said before people apply for 60 70 roles at once um your cv is not going to match 60 or 70 roles you know it's, it's just yeah. not so making sure that from the first application through to your first meeting and the first meetings are now are like are like this so you know we've still got lots of jobs open still got lots of people interviewing and they forget what's behind them what does their camera look like what's the lighting like yeah. in their room you know you have to get ready for the challenge that's in front of you and you know now it's different now so yeah. you know it, it, it's new challenges that we're facing as well um and then going through practice scenarios with them like i said repetition 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 making them practice the interview making them understand who they're meeting uh good questions to ask uh, that, that goes a long way to, to making someone yeah. feel more comfortable and when you're more comfortable you can you can build rapport, you can feel more relaxed and you give a better opinion of yourself. And, you know, that's, that's really what we do round one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, to be able to build a rapport with someone, uh, to be able to be uh, targeted for the employees now with the tech uh, that we mentioned before, is just a one click away from applying a job. That's it. it that is probably poses a, a challenge as well as the as also um easiness right i mean i can just click apply but how do i tailor my one click button to be yeah. able to stand out among others yeah we live in a convenient world right you can order anything to your house in in half an hour in jakarta so you know it's it's how people have have now started to consume everything from food to um entertainment to, to jobs and you know it's I think what's happening now in the world will hopefully shake that up a bit and, and change it a little bit and make people think a bit more about, um, you know, rather than that spray and pray mentality of get as much out there in the market as possible and hope something yeah. sticks, yeah. Um, you know, to be more structured and thoughtful with, with regards to, to what you're doing. And um, yeah, easy, easy apply, um, you, you get, it's deceptive because it's not easy. Yeah. You really got to think about what you're doing and, you know, look, do your research on the company, your research on the role, understand, um, you know, the market that you're looking to get into. And if you don't know, 
ask. You know, a good headhunter will help you. They will give you information, advice, and you know, we run workshops on this kind of stuff. And I'm, you know, I'm sure that we'll be able to, um, you know, to partner on this kind of stuff and offer the right kind of advice. We go to universities as well. We do lectures and talks at universities and try and help people understand because. Um, you know, it's something that a lot of people don't think about. How do you apply for a job? Um, and you know, there's a lot of people coming onto the jobs market now, and you know, there's going to be a lot of competition. So, being able to tailor your CV, being able to have good cover letter, being able to stand out with a good CV. Um, you know, average HR person, normal um, hiring manager, will look at a CV for about seven seconds. That's it. That's mm. what you've got mm. to be able to impress somebody. And You've got to remember they're getting 500 to 1,000 applicants per week. So they might not even see your application. So following up is important. Using headhunters is important. Using your network, trying to reach out to people directly. You've got to go that extra mile if you, if you want a job and to, to stand out from the masses of applications. Um, yeah, those are the main things that I would say. Yeah, cool. Um, before we continue on, I would like to remind uh, the audience so that we can donate through Bagirata. Uh, you guys can open bagirata.id uh, to directly donate, or you just can uh, just you can just uh, scan the QR code on the bottom right. I think. Uh, before we continue, James, there's a couple of questions from the audience that I would like to ask to you. Uh, there's a question from Lalithi Absari. Have you worked with people with unique skills and experience, particularly those with strong soft skills that couldn't be translated into credentials or CV? What's your tip for these people? This is a very interesting question because I also sometimes met a couple of tech talents that I know that he's good, but looking at the CV, it doesn't translate very well. I mean, if a hiring partner see their CV, uh, uh, probably don't have a lot of credentials, but the the people skills that you mentioned before is very important. That is very hard to translate into CV, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's true. You, you've got to be, um, you know, you, again, working with, um, you know, a, a person who knows well working with headhunters is a good start to really be able to, to bring out and understand things about yourself that you didn't know before. And that, you know, Munro as a business, we hire um, pretty much everybody we hire. We hire only Indonesians and we hire them straight from university. So you don't have many skills at that point. But, you know, we we get them in front of us and, and, and we talk to them and we explore you know, what they're capable of, what they want to be able to do. And, you know, you this is why the, the easy apply button has become, um, you know, so prolific because people yeah. you know, with that, so, you know, very good soft skills, um, but not much experience or not many hard skills, as you, as you mentioned. Um, you know, they're, they're not exactly sure what you want to do. And, you know, at 21, 22, you don't know what you want to do. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you do need to start to talk to companies and, and start to engage by headhunting companies, going to, um, you know, events like this, networking, using your network. And really at that stage in your career, it's more about who you know rather than what you know. And you've got to, you know, through family, friends, friends, you know, people that you know that are in companies and, you know, you, you can get into businesses that way. And you know, that's a much more, um, you know, easy approach to take initially. And then, you know, you can start to figure things out from there. Um, and of course, you know, if you've got interest, you know the types of companies you're um, looking for. Again, you know, what I said before, being able to you know, tailor what you've got, but then being able to actually speak to someone. If you can reach out to a hiring manager directly, I've had people, hmm. you know, reach out to me directly. Um, and I've been in this country for two years. You know, the amount of people that have actually bothered to reach out to me directly, I can count on one hand. Rarely oh, happens. Wow. Okay. But, hmm. um, you know, when they do it, it impresses me. I'm like, okay, this person's, you know, <laughs> creative, you know, and, and I'll talk to them, you know, and I think hmm. most good... Um, you know, managers out there who are looking to hire for their team, you know, you, you will take motivation and effort um, uh, over talent and laziness every time. So if yeah. someone shows me motivation and they, and they make the extra effort, I'll, I'll talk to them. And then, you know, if you can show me that you really want to do it and that your, um, you know, your, your, your heart and your motivation is in the right place, then you know, we'll give people a, a chance. And I think that stands for a lot of companies as well. So 
that those would be the, the, the main things that, that could help. That's a very good answer. So it's not what it's not what you know, rather than who you know. Right? <laughs> who you know is a, is a great one, and um, you know a lot of people who are struggling to find roles. I always remind them you've got to think about who's in your network. You know, go back, take yeah. some time, go through LinkedIn, go through your you know your Rolodex. So yeah, depending on what point in your career you are, you know you've got to you've got to look for the low hanging fruit, and that's who you know. Um, and, and that that can really help to, to get you into the positions that can get you to where you want to be. And if you can't get there straight away, think about how you can get there through you know, other businesses. Cool. So moving on, James. Um, this pandemic, James. Uh, I'm sure that the hiring industry is also well uh, impacted by this, right? Um, mm -hmm. Even before, even before before the pandemic begins, we have seen in Indonesia specifically. Uh, demand in supply is uh, 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 an imbalance in demand and supply, especially for tech skills. So, do you think this pandemic will put a pause on that? Uh, do you think what will, uh, when things get more and more stable, what will be different in the hiring world? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, <laughs> we don't know. We've heard from the government when we might be back into the offices in June and end of the um, protocols by July, August time, but. Um, you don't know. I mean, what history tells us, and you know, this global financial crisis, 2008, 2009, was you know the only real thing that I've been through before that would give me some indication. But you know, the good news with tech is that it's always buoyant. You know, it it, it really does manage to come through difficult times, and you know, times like this, pandemics, epidemics. Um, financial crises happen about every five or ten years. So, yeah. you no know, uh, businesses have some kind of template for this, but this is really extraordinary. You know what we're going yeah. through now. So, look, it, you know, there's going to be an awful lot of talent on the market. That that's number one. There's a lot of businesses yeah. which are going through really difficult times. People are getting laid off. Businesses are closing because um, there's no customers. You know, there's um, the, the environments that they've got set up don't allow them to be able to work from home effectively and that puts them in, in a difficult situation. And, you know, one of the um, one of the imbalances there will be lots of talent on the market, not so many companies hiring, certainly initially. So, um, you know, people need to, to be creative with how they're approaching. You know, a lot of the you know, points that we've been covering before, you'll need to do that every yeah. time. Be persistent, be consistent. Um, and, you know, it, it will change people's perception of business as well because, you know, the tech world here and if you've been to tech in asia or any of those events and um you know it's all you know a lot of the talk is about uh, venture capital and investment and i've got this round of backing and that round of backing and mm -hmm. um you know people are starting to realize that um you know venture capital means the reality of venture capital is you're in massive debt that's what it means mm -hmm. and you know when, when a, a situation like this happens you're um, you know, your investors want paying, whether it's, um, you know, wind, rain or shine, they, they need their money. And um, if you've got no money coming in and you have to keep paying your payroll, you get in trouble very quickly. So, um, you know, is that good for you as an employee? You know, well, it's high risk, high reward. And, you know, you need to now, I think a lot of people um, will realize, even though it doesn't feel like it now, it's a horrible situation and uh, it's a really bad time for people. Uh, in the long run, it will help people to realize that, you know, it's not always perfect and you do need to look at stability. You do need to look at longevity of a business. And, you know, yeah. when you go into a company and, and, and you talk to them, you need to ask about these things. You need to check the kind of company you're, you're joining. What's the customer base like? You know, what's the cash flow like? You know, whatever questions you get away with asking and that they're prepared to share with you, you need to, you need to ask. Um, you know, and certainly hiring will be more specific. Um, you know, companies are going to be more thoughtful about how many people they hire for roles. You know, can one person do all of these roles? You know, data science is a good example of that. You know, it's it's three or four jobs rolled into one, um, yeah. <laughs> and it's a new job. But that, that will keep happening. You'll keep getting these new jobs, new job titles coming up, and companies being a bit more, you know, creative with the people that they're hiring. What are you capable? Block, you know, can you do this? Can you know, and, and it will start to create the, these new positions, but you know, also it will get rid of unnecessary ones. Perhaps you know, some of the big unicorns here that, that are a vacuum for the top talent, and 
Um, mm. It causes a big imbalance in terms of salaries. Um, mm. And some of them, they, they create these odd jobs, which are you know, kind of between yeah. roles and they don't really exist anywhere else. And then when those people come onto the market trying to find that job elsewhere, it doesn't exist. So yeah. it will shake things up. It will change the way that companies are hiring and um, it will probably change you know, the, the, the salary side of things as well to some extent because mm. you know, developing countries, you see big increases in salary. You know, 30, 40, 50% is, is not uncommon. We, you know, we've had yep. 100% you know, increases wow. this year that you see, but you know, companies are going to be much smarter, um, mm. and, and that will start to level out a little bit. And you know, over a period of time, that will start to you know fall back towards what you're seeing in more developed countries, what you're seeing in Thailand now, what you're seeing in other countries as well. So, you know, th those are the main things that you'll see, and, and hopefully, it will change people's perceptions of what's good for their career and employers' perceptions of what they need from an employee. That's, that's very interesting. Uh, so it's going to change a lot of things. Probably new roles will appear. Uh, newer roles that we just had uh, a couple of years uh, back probably disappearing. But probably there's no data science anymore. Probably there will be I don't a very specific data roles. science is, gonna, is, is, is a great one. I think it's one of the, you know, the fastest growing areas. Um, but it's, you know, it, it, it's because it serves a purpose and that the world is now reliant upon data and there's massive yeah. amounts of data out there. And I think most businesses are only still scratching the surface. I mean, 1% of the data they produce is, you know, is, is, is really actioned in terms of everything else. It's how do you use it effectively is the, is the big question. And that's really, you know, going to be something that comes into play, not just now for making profit, but for looking at, you know, longevity, stability, um, mm. you know, what, how can we make this a more uh, sustainable environment for the employees? And, you know, there, there's all kinds of data that can be gathered and used. Yeah. And I think a lot of it's been aimed at profit because that's what shareholders want. That's what companies want. But, yeah. um, you know, like I said, I think this situation will be, even though it doesn't feel like it now, it's, there's going to be a lot of good that comes from it as well. And, you know, making yeah. people really think about what's important uh, for longevity and, and in the long yeah. run. And, yeah, it's... it's um, it's it's a good question, and yeah, there's there's, there's lots of other points that could be covered there. But it it's, <laughs> it's back to the fundamentals, right, from the yeah. employer side. Yeah. Okay, uh, um, I'm gonna uh, raise a question again from the audience from Bayou Bayou PD. Uh, what do you think about Indonesia workforce compared with others country? Uh, what we need to win the competition? No, I mean, the, the workforce in Indonesia is fantastic, you know, very entrepreneurial. Um, you know, for me, yeah, I'm getting settled in Indonesia and I, I've worked, you know, I've moved across Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong. And for me, it was really following the, you know, the, the, the curve and Japan was a massive hiring entity back in the day. And, um, you know, Singapore was really, still is to some extent, you know, the hub of tech in Asia. Um, and, you know, but Indonesia has got, a lot of things going for it you know you've got a massive yeah. population um you know, more and more skilled people coming into the market um you've got um you know great english ability um you know and and really like i said entrepreneurial and and, and very, really great people to work with so um for me um indonesia is in a, in a in a in a good position i think you know the government's now starting to do lots of things to bring um, talent to um, bring business to the country as well. I think you've seen, um, you know, the president recently bringing over, um, you know, the president of Microsoft and doing lots of things with, um, you know, with the, the, the media side of things to bring attention to Indonesia. You've got Google and Amazon, which are building data centers here. You've got, um, you've got the start, the start of something which is going to be very big. And, you know, that's certainly why I'm here because it's the crest of the wave. But, you know, companies that have been historically looking at Singapore and Hong Kong as their center, you know, with the new things, the omnibus that, that, that's coming in now, the omnibus bill that I hope to be passed in the next you know, few months will, um, when you look at the amount of capital it takes to start a business, and certainly tech companies are much more mobile, you don't have to be in Singapore or Hong Kong to be successful. And I think a lot of unicorns here have proved that. Now, the amount of capital that might last you two years in Singapore or last you six months in Singapore would last you two years or more in yeah. Indonesia. So um, 
there's lots of people out there who are very entrepreneurial, very hardworking, um, and it's getting it's getting those people into the the workplace now, which is the yeah. it, which is the challenge. And I think events like this, you know, a lot of the the different types of events that we do at Monroe as well, and and starting to collaborate to make sure that the talent know what their skills are, how to present them, and how to get into um, the, the, the workforce is is the next step. And I think as we develop and as we improve how we do that and we use technology to our advantage, it's gonna it's gonna be a, a really great place to work. I think um, you know, like I said, this this is it, it is a massive problem, but with problems come solution. And you know, Indonesia is great at overcoming these types of things. And you know, the, the Indonesian people certainly that I've met very very resilient. So. Yeah. Um, I see good things coming, and certainly why I haven't left the country. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, James, uh, unfortunately, we are already at the end of the session, but before we close the session, is there anything else that you would like to share that we haven't mentioned before? Uh, no, no I, I don't think so, but certainly, you know, thank you very much for the opportunity to come on here and speak with you. You know, the cool. event, um, I only found out about it very recently when you, you know, we spoke a few days ago, but yeah. um, I, I think it's great. I think there's not enough of these types of events. I think certainly being able to collaborate and do more of these to be able to, you know, educate the, the young, you know, people coming into yeah. the workforce and help SMEs to, um, you know, to, to tailor what they're doing to make sure they get the best employees and, and the employees to tailor their approach to make sure they, they, they get the companies that they want to is certainly something that I'm very passionate about, something certainly we do a lot of at Munro. So hopefully we can, um, collaborate more and you know if anyone's got further cool. questions please feel free to, to reach out yeah don't 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 be afraid to reach out directly to james right please do. <laughs> that's what you said earlier okay cool before we uh close the session we're gonna do a uh, a very awkward uh photo session <laughs> on zoom so <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna stay still for like three to five seconds and hope the administrator will take a picture of us and then that's it okay let, let me count three two one Okay, I think they got it. I yep. hope so. <laughs> cool, James. Um, I would like to remind the audience that uh, we still have a lot of great sessions today. We have uh, Prof. Johanna Suryo, we have Pak Yunarto Wijaya, we have Arnold Eck, so stay tuned. And don't forget to donate through bagirata.id and then share the, uh, not share the, don the donation, but share the, about the event on your social media using the hashtag Future of Force Fest 2020, uh, hashtag Siap Hadapi Perubahan, and hashtag Sebar Semangat Di Rumah. So thank you, James. It was a great talk to you, with you, uh, and hope we can. Uh, I hope people uh, can can learn a lot from from you and from this session today. Hope so. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Andy. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.